Sims, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite. Just continuing Alan's road, and things are getting dramatic because he stabbed us. Which somehow was unexpected, but also not unexpected. Like, you, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, you would be the stabby one, wouldn't you? Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, he stabbed us, and now we're starting our next chapter, so. Youth is a flower, but love is its fruit. Fruit. Blessed is the man who waits for the fruit to ripen and picks it. Oops. Click the wrong button. Oh, underworld. The underworld, land of demons. After claiming her soul, I return to the underworld where I belong. And this is the safest place for me. As a high-ranking demon, no ordinary demon would dare approach me. Of course, some are curious about the new soul I possessed, and they've been watching me from a safe distance. Eventually, two of them approached me. Hey there, Alan. I was wondering where you've been. You went out and found a truly chasey-looking soul, I see. But how'd you sneak it out of the human realm? The gods have been keeping a close eye on that place. Damn, it really look, does look delicious. And that unique color. Come on, let me have a taste. The lesser demon licked his lips. Oh, it's a girl. Okay. I held her so tight. Oh no, us. Our soul. Okay. I held her so tight as if to hide it from him. Sorry, I'm afraid not. And this is an important new part of my collection. And if you try anything... You can count on me to devour you next. Oh, look at, like, psycho evil Sprite Alan. I love it. Damn. I glared at them both and they cowered back, but only for a moment. They couldn't seem to resist their desires. They stared at her soul with open greed. <laughs> Don't be so selfish. After all, we're fr all friends here, right? At least let us have a little lick. Gross. Kill him. <gasps> One wing. I gave them the tiniest display of my power, and they took a step back. Hey, hey come on, we're just joking around. Don't get so angry. We know you could destroy this whole destroy this whole place if you wanted to. One wing, just like the cupids, the little or the little angels. We have the other one. That's why we have little scars. I'm just saying. It's weird that they mentioned the cupid and psyche story if it wasn't a cupid and psyche thing, but. We were, or maybe we were just, because, I mean, the cups also were seem very symbolic. With, like, they each have one wing, and it's like, hmm. And then we each have a scar. Interesting. And you know what I mean? But it's still like, why do you keep bringing up the Cupid and Psyche story? Like, because that's about Cupid falling in love with a human. and But he's not a human, so it seems, like, weird to bring it up in this route. You know what I mean? Anyway. <sighs> Still, it's been at least a few centuries since I've seen such a lovely soul. I'm so jealous right now. The lesser demons eventually wandered away. Once I was alone again, I glanced at the soul. A cupid that called herself Spacey Mirror. The soul I'd been seeking for so long. I finally held it in my hands. The soul of your long-lost lover? Blank, blank. I called out the name I knew her by, and closed my eyes. I was barely able to save it before it could disappear. I opened a book containing the details about Cupid, and looked up godly titles. Fin final chapter. Hmm. This book has creepy eyes on it. Hmm. This book of vanquishing was written by Satan. Only the most powerful demons could hold it in their hands. Evoking the slumbering demon in the name of salvation is God's folly. His followers are the enemy. A false god cannot open the gate. At first I was hoping to find a way to destroy the gods of Celestia. Only a demon of chaos with the power of reincarnation become, can become the world's true savior. I thought that if I destroyed Celestia I could bring her back. 
explains why I sought a way to defeat Jupiter. Oh, hi. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Fight over me. Seriously, wait. That would be sexy. To be sealed away is dark praise, given by um, almighty chains. To be so tightly bound may give birth to great wisdom. All I ever found was ways to seal the gods away. There was no way to destroy them, and no way for a demon to reach Celestia in the first place, so there was nothing I could do. But what I did find was something called Godly Titles, Final Chapter. A god with a title and a duty has a limited time, and they believe the false concept of give and take. Valuing sacrifice is a sin. And this taught me that Cupid can only exist for a limited time. Their power disappears after about 400 years. I learned of this when I first became a greater demon. At that point, Cupid was 379 years old. So she disappeared about 20 years. I studied the Book of Vanquishing obsessively, looking for a way to save her. This is actually kind of adorable. He's just been poaching away like, It's how to save my lover! And then finally I found it. One chapter mentioned that Cupid would lose their bow if they fell in love with a human. A sense of compassion and care for another. This feeling cannot be comprehended. Such love strips the god of their divine power. Other than another god, the only other option was a human. It was clear to me that a filthy demon like me could never fill such a role. And that's why I wanted her to fall in love with someone else. And it's funny, so then, like, you fall in love with someone else, and then does he just decide to let you go because you're in love with someone else and all the other routes? And he's just like, eh, fuck, she's happy. He's like, I wanted to fall in love with someone else so I can sit. Ah, uh, she's happy now. Shit, I can't do it. It's kind of cute. I had no choice but to take direct action. It would anger the gods, and I'd surely face retribution. It might even mean a war between Celestia and the Underworld. But still, I carried out my plan, because she was more important to me than the Underworld itself. I'd even give my own life if it meant she got to live. And that's why I've gone through all this. That's so cute. Or maybe because you fall in love with a human... And then you don't, like, because, like he said, you've got so much time, and then they're like, bye, Cupid. And then they axe you, and then you're just dead. You're gone. Whereas now it's like, oh, okay, you fell in love with a human, and now you get to, like, live a human's life, which isn't as long as Cupid's life, but still, it's not the cutoff, you know? Anyway, that's why I've gone through all this. I think we read that. A way to make her live as a human. And the best option was for her to fall in love with a human man. But I failed. Because I just couldn't let her go. So really, that's what happens in all the other routes. He, we fall in love and he's like, oh, Thank God, okay, she's going to live like a human for the next, like, 80 years before she dies. Awesome! As opposed to, you know, she's only got 20. It's okay, sure. If only I hadn't reached out to her. But I just couldn't help myself. And now I'm suffering the consequences. But I'm not going to fail again. I will find a way to place her soul in a human body, but it's not going to be my human body. And then she can live on as a human. It'll work for sure this time. If she can become a human, her soul can avoid destruction. Even if her form is different, at least she'll be alive. If she were to disappear as a god, her reincarnation would become impossible. A living out her life as Cupid would cause her to vanish from this world completely. That's sad. And that's the sad fate awaiting any god who doesn't become part of the DC. And that's simply their way. In order to protect their precious humans, they dispose of their fellow gods. And it's weird, though, because unless you're part of the DC, like you're a lower god, they just kick you out instead of just keeping you around? Like, you're the 86th Cupid because every 400 years we axe you, and then we get a new one. That seems stupid. I can never forgive them for that. That's why I've chosen Rebellion. And that's my way as a demon and a man in love. That's cute. Anyway, I better get moving. I love this. I held her soul tight and looked out over the human realm. I was planning to pay a visit to the human whose soul she'd be inhabiting. But all of a sudden, I couldn't move. My heart was telling me to keep her close to me. But I can't do that. I don't want to fail again, do I? 
I can't blindly listen to my desires anymore. Are we going to have a different, like, body and sprite? That's going to be weird. I feel like this is Clarice. So, you abducted her soul and brought it down here. I turned around to see Clarice standing there. And this is where you're supposed to be like, <gasps> Clarice? Like, we knew. You knew the whole time. Well, for a while. Clarice Tia, the one person who's been helping me out in the human realm all this time. And a demon like me. A succubus. I feel like there's probably people who are like, wait, what? But I mean, like, they kind of hinted at it along, like, the whole time. And then there was one route where it's like, Clarice disappear. Oh, we saw her hanging out. We were like, you know Alan? And then it's like, oh. Clarice, I didn't know you were here. She wasn't showing her true form. It seems like she prefers her human form. Well, after you told me about your plan, I was curious to see how it turned out. She took a closer look at what I was holding, then sighed. As a fellow demon, she probably couldn't believe what she was seeing. Still, she helped me out knowing exactly what my objective was. In order to help me make Cupid fall in love, Clarice had become her roommate. She showed guilt dreams and made him fall in love. She also pushed her to open up and make her think about love. But even then... I'm sorry, I had no other choice. Even after everything you did to help me. This is all my fault. It is completely incompetent. Claris just shook her head. Like, look at how beautiful he looks in his little sprite. Like, ugh, sad and beautiful. Don't mention it. It was nothing compared to what you're about to do. Are you really going to reincarnate her? I am. Why not make her become a demon instead? That way you can be with her forever. When she's human, you can never have her again. Even knowing that, you'd still reincarnate her. Yes. My only wish is for her to live on. I couldn't ask for anything more than that. After all, that was my original plan all along. I only lost sight of my goal after she made me fall in love with her again and lose my focus. My dear love, I don't dare wish for us to be together again. I just want you to survive. That's not what we would want. She's really important to you, huh? Of course. Because she's my... Anyway, I have to go. <laughs> oh, she's my... I have to go. <laughs> Damn it! Just say it! I stood up, still clutching her soul close to me. The preparations are already complete. All I need to do now is bring her soul. Wanting to keep her with me is just my ego talking. And this time, you can find true happiness as a human. I hope you can live happily. I feel like that's the bad ending. Even a demon that has no faith in the gods is allowed to pray once in a while. I flapped my one wing and headed off toward the human realm. Into the far-off skies. To a place I can no longer remain myself. I carry her. No, you don't want to be born again and do this over. Stop it! Mania. According to that love theory, paranoid love, morbid love, but why would a demon ever fall in love with a god? <laughs> there I go again. But I actually enjoyed working at the company. Maybe because I had her around. Go on then, Alan. Finish your mission. I'll be there to help no matter what. Claris is a really good wingman. I mean, she probably has one wing too. I'm just saying. Catch me if you can. I saw a dream. A bizarre dream. I was wishing I wanted to go back somewhere. A sound of a distant wave. A warm, sweet scent in the air. A place I miss. A place I want to return to. When I was a little girl, I used to annoy my parents by crying a lot, wanting to go back somewhere. My mother tells me, this is your home. But someone's waiting for me somewhere. This is our new life. That's what I feel. I was jolted out of my dream by the sound of a tinkling bell. I love- uh, We're like slightly different, but we're basically us. Oh, I dozed off again. It was my favorite class, romantic psychology. It was because I was working late last night. It was that strange dream again. I've had that dream several times since I was a kid. Now that I'm in college, I still see it a lot. But I didn't remember much of the content. It's just a dream that makes me feel nostalgic. Well, that's it for today. Go and think carefully about the report that's due next week.
What? A report? Sheesh, you slept again, didn't you? You've got bracelet marks on your face. <laughs> I love Clarice. What? I hurriedly looked into the mirror I had taken out and saw the marks on my cheeks. Probably because I was sleeping with my arm as a pillow. This bracelet's getting old now. I've been wearing this colored rubber bracelet since I was a child. Oh, somebody made for us and we've had it forever. That's so cute. I'm gonna die. It's a bracelet with cobalt blue and white bands linked together. How the hell it hasn't broken. You listen to me and don't take this bracelet off. You have to wear it even when you're sleeping. This will protect you forever. I'm assuming it was supposed to be Alan telling us that. A gentle voice that I remember from time to time. My old memory about someone telling me not to take it off a long time ago. I wonder who that was. He had a wing, so maybe he was an angel. Maybe it's because I was told not to so many times that I never removed the bracelet. Now I don't feel comfortable without it. So, um, Clarice, would you mind telling me about the report? <laughs> I guess so, but now you owe me a cafe macchiato. Yeah. You have time until your club, right? Er, uh, yeah. Like that, I've been living a pleasant life. My major is romantic psychology. Recently, I've been doing research on the issue of declining birth and marriage rates. For some reason, I've always been curious about it. The stories of other people's love lives and their marriage rates. So I studied hard and enrolled at Los York University. Now I'm studying romantic psychology, which is what I've always wanted. We're doing the same shit we did in our Cupid life. But I fell asleep. I better hold back a bit at my part-time job. After I put my books back into my bag, I left the classroom with Clarice. It stopped raining. It was raining pretty hard when class started. <laughs> Lucky me! We walked through the courtyard, which was which still had puddles of water, to the cafe on campus. This is going to be... This is so hard, but it's so cute. And you're like, you know we're going to end up with them anyway, but... I always had good luck. Once I had avoided a subway accident thanks to oversleeping, and I'd also been saved from being crushed by a falling tree. It's... Alan watching out for us. I'm going to die. Whoa. That's when I tripped over a stone and fell. I splattered the contents of my bag on the ground and hurried to pick them up. That's when it happened. A car shot in front of me and went straight into the garden. It was a breath away from hitting me. Th that scared me. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Alan trips us. We're like, who fucking ghost keeps tripping me? I looked at the car sitting in the garden. Couldn't believe how close that was. If I hadn't tripped, I could have been struck. I really am lucky. Or really bad luck. Like, who the hell almost freaking gets up? Like, what was what was the shit? We almost got electrocuted. What the hell? A tree almost fell on us? Why can't I go up? I avoided a subway accident. I almost got crushed by a tree and now I got hit by a car. All by tw I'm sorry. I don't think I've ever had that many near-death experiences in my life. And she's already had three, probably more. Um, I'm just saying, I think you have bad luck. Someone's trying to kill you and only Alan is saving you from it. That's not good luck. <laughs> that is like... I think I have one near-death experience that I can, like, think of. She's like, I can just list them. I can count. I can count on... I have lost count today. Jesus. I really am lucky. Sure. I gathered up all the scattered textbooks and calmed Clarice down, who was yelling at the driver. We then headed toward the cafe. What the fuck? That was Clarice. Now here's Alan. Phew. That was close. You knew it. I watched over her and I breathed a sigh of relief that I was able to protect her again today. Earlier, when she was about to be hit by a car, I tripped over, tripped her over as fast as I could. She was able to get away. However, I didn't expect her soul to be so attractive for demons. Even after reincarnating, her soul still maintained that same cupidly allure. Usually, when a human reincarnates, the shape and color of the soul changes. I guess a god is different from a human. Her human soul is wrapped around her existence as a goddess. Attractive colors are leaking out of the gap. And because of that, there were always low-ranking demons stalking her, trying to eat her. That makes more sense. So they're the ones trying to get at us and doing things, and then he's like, oop, tripping up and doing all the shit. And we're like, wow, we're really lucky. All these weird near-death experiences. And Clarice is like, <gasps> yeah. And 
as she grew older, even her appearance started to resemble her previous self. I didn't expect this either. Also, the fact that my name is Spacey Mirror, which is weird. Her soul even affects her appearance. Unfortunately, I put her soul in a vessel that had a similar feel as her, so people wouldn't suspect her relation with her parents. So this is a soul of a god. When the law of nature was forced to be changed, imagine my great surprise when they gave her that name. <laughs> is that? They named her Spacey. Yeah, weird. She has the same appearance and same name. As she becomes closer to her past self, I'm becoming more and more fearful. As if fate's trying to return her back to the self she was. You're going to have to fight Jupiter. This is going to be fun. Her soul seems to shine even brighter as she gets older. Because of that, more and more lesser demons started showing up. But she still had that bracelet I gave her, so none of them are able to get near her. So instead, they keep on trying to kill her from a distance. And they're hoping to catch her in the instant before the soul is released from the body and starts to reincarnate. And that's why I can't leave her. This must be painful for him. He's like, I just have to stalk you. And you're like, you just have a demon following you around saving your ass. That's actually kind of cute. And I love it. I want this in anime. There probably is like six. I promised I wouldn't be near her, but I am. I want to hide myself so she doesn't accidentally get her memories back. But we're feeling that you're there and we get our memories. In my demon form, she shouldn't be able to see me. But somehow she can detect me. Yeah, because that's why we're always getting these flashbacks in the memories is because we just know he's there. That's so sweet. She nearly pulled my feathers out when she was a baby. <laughs> it is so weird, though. He's like, my cute little precious love is a baby. That's weird. It's a little weird, but... I wasn't imagining it. She can, in fact, see me. It's probably because she was a god. I can't even be near her in my demon mode. Uh, it's not. It's because we were in love with you. If she couldn't see me, I could be around her 24-7 and protect her. But she can see me, so I have to watch over her from a distance. I felt there was a chance that if she regained her memory, she'll once again become a god. But if she continues to reincarnate, her powers as a god should fade away. I'll blend in with the wind and protect her, so that she can live a happy human life. He's gonna, like, keep doing this, so, like... If she continues to reincarnate. So, like, we're living this life and then we'll die, reincarnate. He'll watch over us. And he's just going to watch over us so many lives. He's like, it's been 84 lifetimes. And you're still always named Spacey and you look the same. What the fuck? Well. But it's so cute that he's just going to stay there. I'll protect you forever. No matter how many times you reincarnate. How many times are we going to go through the reincarnation game where he's like, why does she not change? We're still living in this place. It's just funny. We end up living in the same place. With He's like, maybe I should reincarnate her in a body that's not in the city. Phew. When I got home, I laid down on my bed. Then out of habit, I looked for a massager and I realized something. Every time I lay down in this bed, I have this urge to look for a nearby massager. Chi. Even though I never purchased one before. Oh, an email from mom. Checking my phone, I saw an email from Mom. Apparently, she wanted to know how I'd been doing. I was living alone to go to Lost York University, and Mom was worried about me. You're living alone in a two-bedroom apartment? Why not have your friend as your roommates? She doesn't think I can live alone, does she? Everyone's sharing a dorm. I want to live with Clarice, but... She said no, saying there were some unfortunate circumstances. Interesting. Clarice is really popular, so maybe living with someone else would cause some problems. It's interesting. Why would Clarice say that? I step up, head to the living room, and make some coffee. I then sat down on the bed again. Maybe Clarice is like, no, no, so that you find Gil as a roommate, and then uh, then you'll find Gil, and then you'll fall in love. Because it didn't work the last time when I tried to intervene. Hmm. Or Alan secretly living in the other room. <laughs> we just don't know it. A mug with an image of an angel. I bought it from home. It's my favorite. This cup is a little old, but when I see the picture, it soothes me. That's why I keep using it. Hmm, it's so good. It'd be perfect if I had some cake from Pierre Cormet, Lost York, from 2nd Ave. Pierre Cormet. But their cakes are a bit pricey for college students. That's why I have it for special occasions. I'm gonna resist it today. I'll drink coffee and work on my report. I looked at the picture on the mug and wondered. 
This angel on the mug is only one wing. It also has a bizarre design. I noticed that the angel's reaching out in an odd way. Maybe this mug was made as a pair. We have the bracelet and the fucking mug! Like, Alan, keep this bracelet on you, because that's not going to impact our fucking memory. And I thought that if I wasn't near her, no. Jesus Christ, Alan! And then you gave us the mug? Was there another one like this at home? It was weird, but I just continued drinking. And then I realize I'm searching for the ma massager again. <laughs> She's getting all their memories from being Cuban. The next day, I was visiting my club, the Mythology Research Club. When I entered the classroom, I saw that fellow members... Is it supposed to be? It's not Gil, it's Guile. Guile Lovecraft and Austin Aconite were already there. Oh my god, it's... I was when she said the thing, the mythology, I'm like, is Raul here? Right, but this is the next life, so... Are these supposed to be like Gil and Raul's children? Please tell me they look at them. It's supposed to be like Guile? Gie? Gile? It looks like Guile, but I don't think that's how you'd say the name. But anyway, Austin, looks like you beat me here! Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, you nearly got into an accident yesterday, right? Are you okay? Please show me their sprites. I want, I need their sprites. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm okay. I nearly got hit. Is it supposed to be Guile? <laughs> Is it Guile? Something, you know what I mean? Like, it sounds like it has a fancy French. It's... Gil. <laughs> anyway, kid's overly worried, so I don't elaborate. I sat next to the two and noticed they had their books ready for the debate. Please, God, come on! You can't not give them sprites and make them look absurdly like Gil and fucking Raul. And I'm so looking forward to it. Today's debate's about Ion, right? I think it was called Gnosticism. But my uncle was writing an article about it for a magazine. Oh my God. Gil is his uncle. <laughs> uncle you said is a writer for an occult magazine oh my god <laughs> so funny yeah his name's Gil Lovecraft and he's been obsessed with the lost love for 20 years now oh because we disappeared and we're dead oh my god I love this so much it's so wrong and so weird he says his girlfriend was spirited away and that's why our relatives call him the lovelorn parasite yeah, I met him before. My relative's a friend of his, so he took me to a myth debate. <laughs> I really need their sprites, and I need them to look kind of the same, but so, like the same face, but different color hair or something. I'm just so mad they didn't use sprites for these characters. <laughs> I need to see it. I know it's not really Gil and Raul, because they're still alive, but like, I also want to see Gil and Raul, like 40-year-old Gil and Raul. Because you know they look exactly the same, but they just put a couple little crow's feet by their eyes. Couple little lines. That's how they make them look old. Or they basically make them look like, are you 80? You're 40. Stop it, game. It's like, as soon as you hit 40, you're basically fucking dead. <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> Your family seem to get along well together. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a family thing exactly. I mean, it's a pretty distant relative. Hey, the guy you're talking about is the Sillywood star Raul Aconite, right? <laughs> Raul, I miss you. What? Really? But Austin does look similar to Raul Aconite. Besides, his last name is the same as Raul, too. They might not be close relatives, but they are related. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Raul loves mythology, too. He has lots of books about it at home. I really wish that they had put them that just made the sprites, like, the exact same characters, but again, just changed the haircuts or something. Because this is 20 years later. And I got into it listening to him talk about mythology. <laughs> You have to love the fact that Raul is so into mythology that his, like, second cousin's nephew's sister's son twice removed, whatever the fuck, is like, he talked about it once? No, I'm totally into it. And it's like, oh, God, it's a family thing. <laughs> it's genetic. I see. So Austin got into mythology because of Raul. I mean, I wonder why I'm so into mythologies and demons. Mom and Dad are pretty vocal rationalists. They only believe in what can be proven through science. <laughs> <laughs> so they were pretty surprised when I told them I joined a club all about mythology. But personally, I've always been interested in books about angels and demons and things like that. So it wasn't that strange when I ended up joining the mythology club. I, I really wish our teacher was fucking Alan. It'd be fucking hilarious. Anyway, everyone's here. 
When the door opened, the club leader and other club members came in. Hey, we were just discussing the club leader that we should go to the pool together next time. The pool? Yeah, we haven't been able to throw a welcome party since you guys joined. I was thinking barbecue, but it's a nice season for going to the pool. What do you think? The club leader was looking over at the girl next to him. He probably likes her. <laughs> the club leader must be shy. If he likes her, he should just tell her. For some reason, I have the urge to help their love blossom. I don't like pools or the beach due to a healthy fear of drowning. But declining every time is a waste. Besides, I agree. Yeah, I want to go too. How about you? Everyone else really wants to go. I feel bad saying no just because I can't swim. If everyone else is together, it should be okay, right? Even if I start drowning, someone would come help me. I hope. So I'm not in agreement. I wonder if, um, a healthy fear of drowning. Oh, we have a fear of drowning, so I never learned to swim. Maybe because he stabbed us, took our soul, and pushed our body in the ocean. We don't know. I'd like to go, too. Then it's settled. Let me check everyone's schedules later. Let's get to today's activities. The club leader writes today's agenda on the blackboard. Today's about Ion. It's a difficult topic, so please actively participate in the discussion. Commonly referred to as the god of time, but that's too shallow of a description for a researcher. Try to explore more possibilities, please. As you've heard me say before, the general theory is guilty of this. First of all, you'll find in the writings that... There he goes again, off on the same tangent as always. It's our usual, usual mythology discussion. I concentrate on the topic. Ion, a being that can be regarded as a god, angel, or a spirit. Doctrine holds that it can be either a god or a demon. It's also both a man and a woman. A classic case of hermaphroditism. 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 That just the ditism is the hard part. And it's said that it once gave birth to us humans, and at the same time, it's also said to be a false god. Mythology is so mysterious. From a few alluring words, so many interpretations are born. If you could trace them all the way back to their source, perhaps gods and demons are one and the same. Hmm. Ugh. I got a sudden headache. More than just pain, I suddenly felt unsettled. I tried to pay attention to the discussion. I couldn't explain why, but I was really invested in it. At the same time, why was I suddenly filled with sorrow? You ever get that feeling where you're just like, why am I all of a sudden sad for no reason? Hmm. I'm just saying. The devil gave us time. It's interesting, the Catch Me If You Can chapter, like, nothing happened that was Catch Me If You Can. You know what I mean? A few days later, members of the Mythology Research Club gathered at the pool. I want to see 40-year-old Shelby, too. Oh, wait. He'd be 50-year-old Shelby now, because he was already 30, right? He'd be in his 50s. I need to see 50-year-old Shelby. Come on. He probably looks sexy as shit in that Speedo still. I'm just saying, you know it. Uh, anyway, members of the Mythology Research Club gathered at the pool. I really just want to see our love interest plus 20 years. I just need to see this. It was a pretty famous meetup spot in the city. Hey, coming your way! Come on, who was that meant for? Everyone looks like they're having fun. I sat on the edge of the pool with just my feet in the water and watched everyone playing. The club leader definitely likes that girl. I've been off to one side by myself, just watching everyone else. I did try to join in earlier, but I got a leg cramp right away and had to take a break. Giel. Giel. I'm gonna go Giel. Fancy. Help me out from the pool, and he went to go get some drinks. As for Austin. You look just like Raul Aconite. You wanna hang out with us? Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Well, he was popular. There are only three freshmen in the club. The rest are all older, so it's kind of hard to hang out with them naturally. So I have no choice but to sit alone quietly since Gail and Austin are gone. Guile? Gail. Because it sounds like Gil. <laughs> That's why I'm going with fancy, weird, <laughs> bastardized pronunciation of whatever the fuck his name's supposed to be. I want to go swim some more, but my leg is still cramping. Why did you give him a name that's impossible to pronounce? Stop it. I splashed the water with my feet as I pondered on what to do. All of a sudden, something grabbed my leg. Huh? I was pulled into the pool and fell into it. Wh what? I thought it was someone messing around, but so I saw an ominous dark cloud. God damn it, Cthulhu, leave me the fuck alone! It's not a person. I tried to wave the dark cloud away, but it was no use. 
I struggled and pulled, but that could, the cloud wouldn't disappear. I tried to scream, swallowing water instead. I mean, this is also, if you were like, I kind of have a fear of drowning, and then this happens, I get it. It's painful. I can't float up. I'm going to drown. Spacey! It's either Claris or Gil. I mean, not Gil, Alan. At that moment, I saw something shiny diving into the water. Shining. Someone's hand pushed the cloud away and helped me up. It is Alan. <coughs> I coughed, trying to breathe in as much air as possible. Someone was rubbing my back. His large, warm hands gave me a strange sense of nostalgia. I felt this warm sensation when I used to be afraid as a kid. Even at times when Mom and Dad weren't around. Who helped me? I look up with glimmering eyes. It was someone that I didn't know, but he seemed familiar somehow. Are you okay? I heard a soft voice like a gentle spring breeze. My voice is not soft or gentle like a spring breeze at all. My gut told me it belonged to someone who wanted to take care of me. Someone who would never hurt me. Someone I'd been searching for all this time. I felt like I'd finally found the place I'd been trying to return to. I couldn't find my words, but my lips moved. Did you swallow too much water? Oh, let's call the ambulance. Uh, I'm alright. I'm sorry. I was just so surprised. As I answered, the person in front of me seemed relieved. I see. Good. Oh, well then, I'll just... Wait! I grabbed his hands as he tried to walk away. Then I froze. What did I want to say to him? You want to be like, you're the place I've been looking for. Huh? I've been trying to return somewhere and it's you. Can you imagine if someone said that shit to you? You would either be like, I'm living in a rom-com and this is the most romantic thing ever. Or, oh my god, you're crazy. <laughs> you're like, wait, is there a movie set around here? No, you're crazy. Have we met somewhere before? It was such a cliche, I could hardly bring myself to say it. Nah, do it. That might be a little bit better than, You're the place I belong! <gasps> well, we've met somewhere before, haven't we? Huh? A memory that I didn't recognize went through my mind. What was that? A strange feeling like deja vu. I tried to push it out of my mind and pulled my phone on my bag. Stop eating my headset. Thank you so much for rescuing me. I'd like to thank you again properly, so can you please tell me your contact info? <sighs> the man seemed startled and took a sudden step back. But I showed him my app code and he finally agreed to exchange info. He's like, oh great. I don't use this app much, so if I don't respond, I'm sorry. It's okay. Sorry for the sudden request. I couldn't resist not exchanging contact information. I really didn't want to lose track of him for some reason. Um, what's your name? The contact info didn't have a name. I asked to register his name, and he mumbled for a second. Yeah, you can call me Gil. <laughs> Stop it! Gil? That's the same name as Gil Gil's uncle. Is that you? But you don't look alike. No, I don't know who he is. Gil. Gil? Is that what we're calling him? I don't remember anyway. And Gil is just my nickname. Nickname? Then what's your real name? Is it Guilty? No, sorry, that can't be it. I mentioned a mythology club term out of nowhere. I guess I still had the club leader's lecture stuck in my head. Why is he using Gil? It doesn't have a great meaning, so I thought maybe Gil was a nicer version. I tried thinking of a more obvious answer, but maybe if he says Alan, we're going to be like, Ching, I know you, Gil. Eh. Uh, that's great, guilty. Yeah, that's the perfect name for me. Oh, I see, then... Guilty? If you happen to have time after this... Huh? Your hair is wet. Hey, did you go inside the pool? I thought you had a leg cramp. Are you okay? Gail ran over. I'll be going now. <laughs> guilty! <laughs> oh, guilty! He went away. I wanted to thank him. Hey, you have a bruise on your leg. Are you okay? Need something to chill it? Jesus Christ, he is like, are you sure you're not Gil's child? Gil would never get married. He's been waiting for us his whole life. He's going to die alone. Oh. I feel you, Gil. Huh? Oh, you're right. The other club members looked over when they heard Gil yell out. Hmm? Did something happen? Did you drown? Are you okay? I'm okay. I bumped my leg and got a bruise. Oh, that's good to hear. Oh, no, that's coming. That's good to hear. Gil, you fret over her too much. 
like father, like uncle. I mean, like uncle, like nephew, <laughs> like father, like uncle. <laughs> I was like going to say like father, like son. And I was like, wait, no, he's his uncle. So that's like uncle, like nephew. Definitely. He's always so overprotective. I don't have any siblings, but if I did have a brother, I feel like he'd be just like this. Oh, oh, Gil, Guile, whatever your name is. Oh, God, you're Gil 2.0. We're calling him Gil 2.0 now. This bruise was caused by that dark cloud. I thought about what I saw in the water and got the chills. Things like this have always happened when I get near the water, ever since I was a kid. This isn't the first time I saw that cloud. That thing assaulted me several times. But it is the first time it actually grabbed me. Before it seemed like it was just watching me from afar. It was so scary. At the same time, I've never had anyone help me when the dark cloud appeared like that either. Guilty help me, whoever he is. But that can't be his real name, right? It's not exactly common, and it sounded like he was just rolling with it. <laughs> However, regardless of his name, he had a scent that I faintly remembered. That's why I want to meet him again. Will he meet me if I tell him I want to thank him? It's also weird because we were like... 24, 25, and now we're only, like, 20, so, like... I hold my phone tight. It was strange that even though we had never met before, it didn't feel like the first time. I really hope it's, like, a couple years later that we run into him again, and it's like, you haven't changed, and then, like... Because, like, we're, like, 19, 20, and we were at least 24, 25 before, and now we're, like, younger, and that now it's like, uh, now you're getting a little creepy game with, like, the whole... We're, like, 19, and he's, like, and I'm, like... It's only a few year difference, but it's like, really? This is, you were how like, ah, we're going to, you're going to be young with the older man, like the 19 year old and the 42 year old. Creepy. Stop. Anyway. So it's weird. You know? <sighs> I screwed up. I couldn't help but sigh as I looked at her contact info in my phone. Bird, stop it. You can't show my headset. I couldn't stop myself from stepping in, even though I shouldn't meet her even though I knew I shouldn't meet her. No one else was helping me as I was drowning in a fucking public pool. Because of that, I couldn't come up with a decent fake name and used Gills. It ended up being Guilty. And that mythology club president kept repeating the word Guilty, so it stuck out to me. And that's probably why she said it too. But thinking about the actual meaning gets my heart racing a little. Because it felt like she was staring right through me. Like she could see my sins. I've already sinned so many times, and even now I'm still... It was a sin to reach out to her, to want to talk to her. In the unlikely event that she finds out my real name, she might get her memory back. I need to make sure she doesn't find out. It would have been best if I had never met her, but... I had no choice, though, or she would have drowned. Bird, stop it. It's all because she took off that bracelet at the pool. I'm sure she didn't want to harm any harm to come to it. But because of that, the lesser demons were able to get their hands on her. Ah, oh, that explains it. If I hadn't rushed in to save her, she would have drowned for sure. And those damn demons would have claimed her soul. When I touched her, I got some of my scent on her. That should keep the lesser demons at bay for now. I didn't think she'd take that bracelet off. I hypnotize her to wear it all the time. Back when she was two years of age, I implored her to never take it off. And that's why she never took that bracelet off. But I guess the suggestion has been getting weaker. As she got older, I wasn't able to approach her again. And the power I imbued within the bracelet is probably getting weaker, too. We should send her another one. After all, it's been nearly 20 years since I created it. That bright rubber bracelet that I made with her. It's getting pretty old, so its ability to deter demons is fading. Make her a new one. But if I get too close to her, she might remember her past. So I can't do that either. The day has come. I'll need to find a way to infuse more power into it. But she nearly got killed just by taking it off. Get her another one. I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't watching. She's being targeted by demons because she has the soul of a god. I'll always protect her. So long as she's living a happy human life, I'll watch over her. But here's the thing. So after we were 379 years old, right? So we had about 21 years and then they would have axed me. He took her. He basically was poisoning her soul. And he's like, you have a year to live. You know? 
Or, oh, no, maybe that's what he meant when he was like, you were going to die next year, was they were going to kill me next year as Cupid. But don't you think that I have a soul of a god, but you took it away, you put it in, the, we've reincarnated, that should have worn off. Because there's been a new Cupid for like 20 fucking years now, so you'd think that like the godness in our soul would have worn off because they were going to kill me a year later. So after that year buffer, that overlap, we should be fine. Right? Hi, give you kisses because I love you. What you doing? You're very fidgety. Anyway. Uh, so long as she lives a happy human life. I think I read that. Anyway. Suddenly I heard a message notification ping from the phone I was holding. Hmm. I look at the screen and groan. It was a message from her saying that she wanted to thank me properly. And you're like, uh, yeah, she's in love with you already. A few days later... I wonder if Guilty will come. I was waiting for Guilty at the Happy Forest Cafe alone. I wanted to do whatever I could to see him again to thank him properly for his help. I didn't get a reply, so I was feeling kind of down. But a few days later, he got back to me and said he could meet for half an hour. I didn't want any second of that to go to waste, so I arrived 30 minutes earlier and waited patiently. My heart's pounding. He's like sitting there. He knows because he's following us. I looked over at the cookies that I bought from Pierre Cormet's Lost York as a gift. I wasn't sure why I wanted to meet him again. Clarice told me it's dangerous to meet up with some guy you only talk to once. She was totally against this whole thing, because she knows. So I came here in secret. She has no idea I'm here. She does. The door opened and Guilty appeared. <laughs> it's Guilty. Guilty! Er, oh, yeah, in the flesh. I'm sorry to bother you. I really wanted to thank you for your help. I pick up the drink menu. Hand over the menu, ask what to drink. Order him a bubble tea. For God's sake, come on. Oh! Save. So this is save number two here. Okie dokie. Boop, boop, boop. Save. Yes. Okay, we ask what to drink. Oh, what would you like to drink? Uh, yeah, I'll have a Vienna coffee. Can we have one Vienna coffee, please? After I placed the order, Guilty sat down in front of me with a slight smile. I thought it'd be a good idea to chat a bit, so I started talking about the first thing that came to my mind. One time I met someone who thought Vienna coffee actually had Vienna sausages in it. I laughed till my stomach hurt. When did that happen? I, I don't remember. I see. Look at he looks because he's like, I, when he said Vienna coffee, I was like, that popped into my head and I'm like, I wonder if it's going to trigger a memory. I always think of that when I order a Vienna coffee. Weirdly, I can't actually remember who I was with when that happened. And that's the weirdest shit. You have memories. You're like, I remember this happening. But like, was it a dream or was it real? Oh my God, it's a past life. Hmm. But the name's so similar. I guess it makes sense. Has that ever happened to you, Guilty? Actually, yeah. I did say that to someone once and she laughed at me too. He's like, oh. I love how we got love points. I mean, so lots of people think the same thing, huh? They should change the name to something more obvious. Like whipped cream coffee. As we sat there joking around, I casually pulled out the present I'd gotten him. Thank you so much for the other day. If you don't mind, please take this. And this packaging. They're cookies from Pierre Cormet, Lost York, on 2nd Avenue. I love their cakes, but I heard that their cookies are excellent, too. Oh, you see. Oh, and a coincidence. They like their cakes, too. He made a sorrowful expression as he said that. He's like, you're basically you, damn it. If Because you, you know what I mean? Like, if you were like Alan and you took the soul of your lover so that she would stay forever, so she would keep reincarnating and she wouldn't disappear from existence, and you put her in this other body and you were watching over her and she basically became the exact same fucking person, you'd be like, this hurts. But if you're like, I love this soul so much and you put it in a different body and they become a different person, like they like different things and they're basically not like, you're like, oh, this girl, she, like, aside from us looking exactly the same, be like, oh, she was into pink and frilly things and she was so girly. And then now she's like totally into sport, like the complete opposite. You'd be like, okay, I still love the person I knew and I'm happy for her, but your, your love would start to fade. You would still love their soul, but you would be able to disassociate this new person from the one that you loved because they're different. You know what I mean? 
And then the next time they reincarnate and then so on and so forth. You're just like, I'm here protecting them because I, I love them, but I'm not in love with them because the person you're in love with isn't that person anymore. They've been so many other people. But this, he's like, you're the same damn person. This is hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's so hard. It's like they got amnesia, but the only thing they forgot was you. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, you remember everything but me. Weird. That sucks. It's basically. But she kind of remembers him, which is weird. You know, it's harder. He doesn't know that, but anyway. I feel like I'd seen that expression plenty of times before. Eyes that were trying to hide a pain buried somewhere deep inside. But this was only our second time meeting, so why did I think I'd seen it plenty of times? Hi. If you have the poopies, you gotta go on the floor in the laundry room. Okay, you don't poopies on me. Do you need to go? Because you look like you need to go poopies, but I don't want you pooping on me, and I don't have tissues. Hold on. Let's see. You're struggling around. We're going to have to put the controller down. Everyone's going to have to wait while we try to get the birdie to an adequate poopy location. Do you have the poopies? I can sneak into the bathroom because my phone cord is really long. My headset cord. Do you have the poopies? You getting poops? I'm not going to be able to clean it up. I'll have to get out of here. The poops? Good boy. Okay, come here. She's a good birdie. Thanks for not pooping on me. Um, hold on. Everybody, <laughs> like, listen, I'm like, what the hell is happening? The birdie poopies, and we have to clean it up. Hold on. I can reach a tissue. And then I have to, <laughs> my headset cord is really long, and being up in the loft is nice. I just have to snake it under the door or open the door wider. Okay. Just to clean up the bird messes, because he's been sitting and being a good boy for, like, the last 50 minutes, and he was getting fidgety, and I don't want him pooping on me. He's been very good. We're having to retrain him because he used to know where to poop. And then we moved here and he's like, I poop wherever I want. And it's like, no, asshole. No, you don't. So I've gotten used to kind of shooing him back to his cage. So he's been pooping on his cage, not on me. Or if we go into the bathroom. He poops on the counter or the floor. That's fine. I'll clean it up. Don't poop on me. Don't poop on the carpet. So I'm sorry. And I don't know where to poop. <laughs> Listen, listen, we have to take bird poopy breaks sometimes. Okay. He's been very good, but he was getting, like, like if he just snuggles and stays that way, it's fine. You just go into the bathroom or go downstairs, he'll be fine. But, like, he was getting fidgety and looking at me, and I'm like, if you poop on me, you're going to get yelled at, and it's not your fault, because he doesn't have his little play place. We don't have your play place yet, okay? Okay, anyway. Sorry. Anyway, so this was our second time meeting. Okay. I, I see. That's great. I feel bad, though. It wasn't it expensive for a college student. It's fine, because you're my savior. Please take them. All right, I'll accept. I actually really like sour stuff like these. He made a sweet smile and took the gift. Hmm, sour? This is the first time I've met someone who says sweet is sour. <laughs> first time, right? I was overcome by that same feeling I'd felt earlier. An inexplicable sense of happiness at the fact that I got to be there with him. My confusion must have been obvious, because he started to look worried. Are you okay? Did you hurt yourself anywhere while you were drowning? I'm fine, but thank you. It seems like every time I get near a body of water, I end up nearly drowning. Every time. Every time I go into the water, I get a leg cramp. That's why I try to avoid swimming. But that day, I accidentally fell in. Some kind of strange cloud pulled me in, but that's pretty hard to swallow, so I left that part out. I always get into trouble like that at pools and beaches. I see. I went to the beach a lot as a kid, but I nearly drowned every time. I was so young, I don't really remember the details. I just remember it was really painful. Painful and dark. But someone rescued me back then, too. I wonder who it might have been. Well, that's interesting. I feel like that's an association now. It makes me wonder because, like, every time I went to the beach a lot as a kid, but it was always painful because that's where he stabbed us at the beach. So we get a leg cramp and then someone saved me. But that's the thing. I don't think it's. I mean, something pulled us in, but I'm wondering if our association with the beach started with him stabbing us. That's, you know what I mean? It's a negative association. Hmm. Anyway. Guilty, looking guilty. <laughs> so, because of that, I can't swim. I drown every single time, so my parents told me not to go into the water. Even though I like the beach, I really wanted to enjoy the water. 
But no matter how much I stretch and prepare, I get a cramp, so I sort of gave up on going. Do you like the beach? Yes, I get a sense of nostalgia when I go. Feels like I'm going back somewhere familiar. That's why I'd like to go more often. And then why don't we go together? Huh? My eyes darted toward Guilty's face. He had an expression that looked like he'd done something wrong. Uh, um, well, you know... Yeah, because he's like, forgot. He's like, we should go together. I mean, shit. You'll go to the beach with me? For real? I quickly approach him, willing him not to take back his offer. He seemed pretty startled. For some reason, the whole scene left me feeling really nostalgic. Why do I keep thinking his reactions are so familiar? I just met him. He looked like he was searching for the right thing to say. Finally, he gave up and simply nodded. It's just once. Only as your guardian. Yay! I'm so happy! Thank you so much, Guilty! I really do wish that, like, it had been like he saved us and then he ignored us and then we meet him years later type of a thing. He made a small smile when I showed my happiness. He said guardian, which I can only assume meant he was treating me like a child. I mean, he has watched you since you were a baby, which is weird, but... And how about next Sunday we go to Right Skirt Beach? Okay, I'll keep my schedule open for that day. Yeah, Alright, thank you so much! I live in Lost York, but I've never been to Right Skirt Beach. I've always wanted to go. I see. Perfect, then. We go, and we're like, I remember being stabbed here once. And he's like, what? I thought you've never been here. And you're like, you stabbed me. And he's like, huh? And you're like, weird. Huh. Well, I gotta get going now. And thank you for the cookies. Oh, by the way, if you get leg cramps a lot, you should try eating smoked fish liver and heart. Fish liver and heart? Isn't something like that written in the Book of Tobit? It's how you avoid Osmodius. Osmodius. Ooh, is Osmodius the one that's trying to kill us? I'm pretty sure that had come up at my mythology club before. Ah, oh, so you're familiar. Well, it works pretty well. Osmodius is the one trying to drag us into hell via the water. Okay, so it wasn't Cthulhu. We're fine. Guilty then left money on the table and quickly departed. Why are you screaming at me? We're almost done. Gone already? Guilty is a strange person. He seemed to know about the Book of Tobit. I wonder if he knows a, a lot about exorcism. He's so kind for listening to my sudden requests. But still, he seems to want to keep some kind of distance. It was just as true today as the day we met. But if he didn't want to see me again, he wouldn't have come, right? I didn't understand his actions, but I was thrilled at the idea of getting to go to the beach with him. Why? Did you want patties? I'm sorry, I can't see you. I wish he'd let me pay for the coffee, too. He's probably being generous. Because I'm still a college student and he's an adult. Guardian, huh? He's caring in a way that's different from... Gil's fretting. I can't figure out how to pronounce his goddamn name. I remained at the cafe alone and sipped my coffee. It was weird, but I was feeling strangely calm. Alright, perfect place to end it. What you doing, cutie patooties? Ooh, your feathers are soft. <gasps> oh, we don't get to see Alan in his f demon form. Right now. So anyway, we'll see it next time. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.